Saudi Arabia is no stranger to mind-blowing megaprojects, from mile-high skyscrapers to futuristic cities in the desert. But while the country is breaking records, it faces a massive water crisis. With limited freshwater sources and increasing demand, something had to be done. Their solution? Pump millions of gallons of salt water from the Red Sea and bury it beneath the desert sands. Sounds bizarre, right? But here's the real shocker. This project's results are extraordinary. So why hide water underground? Let's find out, shall we? The Desert's Lifeline, Saudi Arabia's strategy for water security. Saudi Arabia, a land of vast deserts, holds a surprising secret. There's not a single natural river within its borders. Yet this arid kingdom has managed to harness water resources extraordinarily. As of 2021, the country had constructed an impressive 544 dams. But why? Typically, dams are built to block rivers, forming reservoirs to store and distribute water for people, agriculture, and industries. However, without rivers, what exactly are these dams controlling? The answer lies in an unusual feature of the Saudi landscape, wadis. These dry valleys are indistinguishable from the surrounding desert for most of the year. But when rain does fall, often in short, heavy bursts, they transform into powerful streams, channeling water at incredible speeds. Looking at Saudi Arabia's rainfall patterns, it's easy to assume that the sporadic inches of rain wouldn't make much of a difference. However, when heavy downpours occur, they can generate enough water to sustain entire cities. The problem? The water rushes away just as quickly as it appears, sinking into the sand or evaporating under the scorching sun. To solve this, the Saudis built dams, lots of them. Altogether, these structures can hold an astonishing 607 billion gallons of water. In Mecca alone, 60 dams have been erected with a total storage capacity of 232 billion gallons. Among them stands the mighty Holly Dam, reaching 311 feet in height and stretching 1,260 feet in length. Though it doesn't block a river in the conventional sense, its reservoir holds nearly 66 billion gallons of water, making it the second largest dam in the country. In the Asir province, 118 more dams work to trap seasonal water surges, collectively storing 137 billion gallons. These reservoirs contribute around 422 billion gallons of drinking water per year. Yet despite all these efforts, Saudi Arabia's main water source isn't its dams. It's something hidden beneath the ground. Beneath the desert surface lies a vast reserve of groundwater stored in ancient underground lakes. Estimates vary, but between 68 and 2011 trillion gallons of water sit beneath Saudi Arabia's sands. However, only a fraction, about 739 billion gallons, can be sustainably extracted each year. This is renewable groundwater replenished through rainfall. The rest is locked away in deep rock formations, taking thousands of years to recharge. Still, Saudi Arabia taps into these reserves at an alarming rate, pumping out nearly 5 trillion gallons annually, far beyond the replenishment rate. If this continues, the country risks depleting its most vital water supply. With rainfall unpredictable and groundwater running out, how else can they secure enough water? One solution? works on treating wastewater at special water treatment facilities. But how does Saudi Arabia, a nation with such extreme water scarcity, make the most of every drop? Stay tuned for an astonishing approach to water recycling that may just change the future of desert survival, the underground river that defies nature. Saudi Arabia has taken an innovative approach to securing water by recycling it. Across the country, 133 specialized wastewater treatment facilities process and purify used water, ensuring it can be reused. In 2019 alone, these plants treated and recycled an impressive 1.3 billion gallons of water daily. And with demand growing, projections suggest this number will increase by around 4% each year until 2050. Yet even with this progress, it's not nearly enough. Saudi Arabia's population is expanding just as rapidly, pushing water demand higher than ever. Engineers and researchers faced a daunting challenge, how to transport large quantities of water efficiently across the vast desert. Their solution, an underground river. Of course, this isn't a natural river. Laying down anything resembling traditional waterways in Saudi Arabia would be futile. The searing heat would cause massive evaporation and whatever water remained would be quickly absorbed into the desert sands. 
Instead, the Saudi Water Authority engineered something even more remarkable, an artificial underground river in the form of a colossal pipeline system. This man-made waterway stretches an astonishing 8,700 miles, a length so vast that if you straightened it out, it would be twice as long as the Amazon River, the longest natural river on Earth at 4,400 miles. Even Africa's mighty Nile, which flows on the other side of the Red Sea, pales in comparison. To put it into perspective, Saudi Arabia's existing water supply network extended just over 78,200 miles as of 2019. While far larger, most of those pipelines and channels run along the surface. What makes this new underground waterway so extraordinary is its hidden, buried infrastructure, which allows water to be transported across the kingdom with minimal loss. It's an engineering feat unlike any other, but where exactly does this underground river flow? Let's take a look at the geographical map of Arabia. What hidden features might reveal even more secrets? Stay tuned. Saudi Arabia's harsh terrain, conquering mountains and deserts for water. From the western shores of the Red Sea to the Far East, the route of Saudi Arabia's underground river is nothing short of an engineering marvel. The builders faced extreme challenges, starting with the mountainous terrain. Towering peaks stood in their way, forcing them to either find a less treacherous path or carve directly through solid rock. Drilling through mountains is no easy task, no matter how skilled the engineers. But that was only the beginning. Beyond the mountains lay the vast desert where new obstacles awaited. Anyone familiar with Saudi Arabia's central regions knows that nothing comes easy in this harsh landscape. The heat alone is staggering. Between 1991 and 2020, the average annual temperature here hovered around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Manageable, but far from comfortable. Summers, however, was a different story. Temperatures soared to a scorching 95, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the desert into an unforgiving furnace. And then there was the wind, hot, relentless, and thick with dust. The shifting sands made construction even tougher as each gust threatened to undo hours of grueling work. But despite these conditions, the builders pressed on, digging deep beneath the surface. Placing the pipeline underground was not just a necessity, but an advantage. Shielded from the sun, the water inside wouldn't evaporate as quickly. Yet the sheer scale of the project was overwhelming. This wasn't just a simple underground stream. It was a massive pipeline capable of transporting an astonishing 5 billion gallons of water every day. A project of this magnitude wasn't just about convenience. It was about survival. With this new waterway, Saudi Arabia could ease its reliance on groundwater, replenishing precious underground reserves. But where does all this water come from? Surely they can't just pump it straight from the Red Sea or the Persian Gulf. After all, it's salt water. The answer lies in one of the most innovative water solutions in the country, desalination. But how does Saudi Arabia turn seawater into a drinkable resource on such a massive scale? Stay tuned to uncover this groundbreaking process. Saudi Arabia's desalination breakthrough, transforming seawater into survival. One of the most groundbreaking solutions to Saudi Arabia's water crisis is desalination, the process of converting seawater into fresh drinkable water. Decades ago, in the 1980s, the country barely tapped into this technology. But over the years, Saudi Arabia made a massive push to master desalination, constructing 30 plants along its coastline by 2011. By 2023, that number had climbed to 33, and by 2024, it had reached 38. The progress doesn't stop at numbers. The scale of desalination in Saudi Arabia is staggering. In 1980, the country produced just 2 billion gallons of fresh water per day. Fast forward to 2024, and that number has soared to 3.5 billion gallons daily. That's enough to supply millions of homes, industries, and farms. Today, Saudi Arabia isn't just a leader in desalination. It's the largest producer of desalinated water in the world. A glimpse at records shows how far ahead the Saudis have been in this race. Even in 2009, they were already the global front runners in desalination. And while other nations have since improved their capacity, Saudi Arabia remains firmly at the top. One of the most astonishing projects is the Ras Al Khair desalination plant. This colossal facility built for $7.2 billion holds the Guinness World Record for being the world's largest desalination plant. Every single day, 
it churns out an incredible 792 million gallons of fresh water. Following closely behind are desalination plants in the UAE, but Saudi Arabia secures another top spot with its Jubil plant, which produces 211 million gallons daily. Across Saudi Arabia's coastline, desalination stations are the lifeline of the nation, feeding fresh water into the country's eight 700-mile-long artificial river. This system not only reduces reliance on underground water reserves, but also sustains the growing population and numerous development projects. Yet with such rapid advancements, there's another urgent challenge. How to ensure sustainability in a country where fresh water is so scarce? The answer lies in a bold nationwide initiative, the Green Initiative. But what exactly does it aim to achieve? Stay tuned, Saudi Arabia's green revolution, turning deserts into lush landscapes. Saudi Arabia is embarking on an ambitious environmental transformation, the Green Initiative. With desertification threatening its landscape, the country aims to protect 30% of its land and plant 10 billion trees. But trees need water, and that's where a revolutionary artificial river system comes in. Spanning the nation, this network will support reforestation efforts across 184 million acres, slowing desert expansion and improving air quality. In urban areas, temperatures could drop by nearly 4 degrees Fahrenheit, an essential change in a country where summer highs reach 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the initiative began, 77 related projects have been launched with a massive $186 billion investment. The government, private sector, and environmental organizations have already planted 41 million trees and significantly expanded protected land. While much of the effort has focused on northern Saudi Arabia by 2030, the entire country is expected to be noticeably greener. One city at the heart of this transformation is Riyadh. As Saudi Arabia's capital and a global economic hub, Riyadh attracts millions of visitors but struggles with extreme heat, minimal rainfall, and frequent dust storms. To address this, the Green Riyadh Project was introduced, one of the world's most ambitious urban forestry initiatives. By 2030, more than 7.5 million trees will be planted across the city in parks, schools, universities, and even mosque courtyards. This will increase green space per resident from 1.7 to 28 square miles and raise overall green coverage from 1.5% to 9%. The impact will be dramatic, better air quality, higher oxygen levels, and a 6% drop in CO2. In the most heavily forested areas, temperatures could fall to 59 degrees Fahrenheit, making the city far more livable. However, transforming Riyadh comes for $23 billion. One of the biggest components of this project is King Salman Park, a six square mile green space replacing an old air base. To put its size into perspective, it will be 11 times larger than London's Hyde Park and over four times the size of New York's Central Park. But this isn't just about greenery. King Salman Park is set to become a major cultural and recreational hub. It will feature a 5 million square foot Royal Art Complex, a two 300 seat national theater, a sculpture hall, a library, and an institute for traditional arts. The park's design incorporates walking trails, shaded areas, and water features inspired by Saudi Arabia's seasonal riverbeds. Accessibility is also a priority. The park will be connected via five subway stations, 10 bus stations, and six major roads, ensuring easy access for residents and tourists alike. Originally scheduled for completion in 2024, the project is now expected to be finished by 2027. At the core of all these efforts is water. Without it, reforestation and urban greening projects would be impossible. That's where the artificial river system plays a crucial role, an innovation that could reshape Saudi Arabia's future. With all these incredible tech solutions transforming water management in Saudi Arabia, how do you think they're impacting daily life? We would like to hear your thoughts in the comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.